Just like a car or a home or the human body, your camera gear needs some maintenance. So I'm gonna talk about what you need to do on a regular basis to your camera, your lens, and your tripod. Nowadays, you need to regularly update the firmware on your camera and often your lens. So check out your manufacturer's support page and see if there is new firmware. As a general rule, I do not install firmware within like the first week after it's been released. Why? Because regularly there have been recalls on firmware. They will issue a firmware update and find out it breaks something and my camera's too important for me to take that risk. So I let everybody else beta test it and I just wait a little bit. On a regular basis, I also like to go through and re-customize my camera's custom settings. You know the My Menu setting, which has customized menu settings? Those custom one, two, and three settings on that dial there. I'll update those depending on how my shooting style has changed. If you're not familiar with how to do that, check out our free tutorials at sdp.io slash tutorial. But even if you've done it once, chances are good. A year from now, you'll be shooting slightly differently, regularly accessing different menu settings, and it's good to set your camera back up again. Let's get into literally nitty gritty stuff. I recently went to Iceland and I forgot to clean my camera sensors beforehand, and that ended up being a real pain. Now, as a habit, I always end up trying traveling with one of these blowers. These blowers are incredibly useful and they're kind of your first line of defense for sensor dust. What you wanna do is just kind of put it in the edge here and just blow from the center towards the edges of the frame. Many cameras also have the capability to shake the sensor to remove some sensor dust. So check your camera's menus, usually it's under that wrench icon, and see if your camera has an automatic sensor cleaning option. If it has the option to do that automatically every time you turn off the camera, I like to use that option. Neither one of those are perfect. They will get off some dust, but they will not get off all the dust. And as a result, on a regular basis, I have to manually remove the dust from my camera with a swab. Some people are afraid of this. I understand it. We have an entire video showing you how I do it. Other people prefer to send the camera to a manufacturer, but I don't like being without my camera. And frankly, I think they might be doing the exact same thing that I do. Depending on your camera model, how often you change lenses, and the environments you shoot in, you might need to clean your sensor every single shoot, or you might not need to clean your sensor for six months. A good way to find out if it's time to clean your sensor is to get fairly close to just a plain white wall. Use aperture priority and the highest f-stop you can. Now you can just record a video or just look at the back screen, but just kind of move the camera around a little bit. Just move it around like this and sensor dust here will show itself by not moving with the wall but staying stationary within the frame. Sensor dust is probably the biggest problem, but you can also get dirt and sand on the outside of the camera. It can just collect in little crevices, and once it gets in the crevice, eventually it's either going to fall out or work its way into the camera, but you can help that process along by being sure to regularly remove any dirt from the crevices of your camera. For that, I just like to use some kind of brush. This is a sensor cleaning brush. They're pretty common and you can see here it has just nice soft bristles. So I'll regularly just go through every crevice on the lens or camera and just brush stuff out and make sure that nothing is in there. This gear isn't dirty, but you get the idea. Here's a suggestion that comes from my friend and amazing landscape photographer, Kyle Wolf. You should look him up. Cover the hot shoe in your camera. You can see the hot shoe on top there has electrical contacts that are meant to fire a flash. And if they're left exposed like this, they can become corroded, they can get wet, and possibly short your camera out. You can get little hot shoe covers. Your camera probably came with one. And you just slide it right in there and it kind of seals it up and protects it from the elements. My cameras all came with those and I've managed to lose them all because at some point I put a flash in and I need to remove it and I shove it in my pocket and it gets lost or something. So you can just go and just buy a pack of 20 of those and keep a couple extra in your bag. Your camera's battery requires maintenance too. Whenever I'm done using the camera, I try to remember to always plug it in. Most cameras nowadays are USB chargeable, so I just have a place on my desk where I can plug it in and let it charge overnight. The charging is slow, but it eventually gets it done and if you keep topping it off, just like like you would your phone, you're probably gonna be fine forever. Just like your phone, after six months or a year, the battery life is gonna to start to suck. That's just how lithium ion batteries work. If you charge
start them to 100%, they don't give you another option, then they lose life over time. It also happens if they die out completely. So every time we get a camera or a new battery, I write the date that we received it on the battery. Then I know that this particular battery is a year old or it's two years old. And for one, if you end up with multiple batteries, that'll help you know that this newer one is probably better than this older one. But it also helps you know when a battery has reached end of life. We usually stop using a battery after about a year. Sometimes we'll stretch it to two years, but after that point, we found batteries become unreliable. They will go from having three bars of battery life to having zero. And when that happens, you don't get your shot and you're just completely screwed. That's like a worst case scenario. That's a pretty big deal. So dispose of those old batteries at a recycling station. A lot of home places like Home Depot will recycle batteries for you. You can't simply throw them in the trash, but definitely stop using them because they are putting you at risk. I would suggest buying multiples of the manufacturer's battery, even though they're painfully expensive, we have tested so many different third-party batteries and while they work fine at first we find that six months down the road they're extremely unreliable and power is extremely important because without it, your camera doesn't work right something else that you should regularly check on is your camera strap I have multiple times seen camera straps break when a photographer was out traveling this little piece here can become loose it can wiggle its way down or it can become frayed and just completely break off and what happens then the camera goes tumbling to the ground and breaks. This has happened multiple times. So please check your strap on a regular basis and if it's looking frayed at all, just replace it. You might not think about it, but your tripod requires regular maintenance too. Just like your camera, it will collect dirt and dust and well, as you can see, this particular tripod has, well, it's had a productive life. It has been worked hard and put away dirty and there's lots of kind of sediment that's gathered in there. For that, I just need to go back to my brush here, wipe out any loose particles and then use clean fresh water to remove the rest of it so that I minimize the amount of corrosion that's going on. All tripods have some screws that need to be tightened on a semi-regular basis. Most tripods have a removable head that goes on like this and over time if you're walking with it, if you have it in the back of your car and there are vibrations, it will eventually come loose and that can kind of screw you over. So you want to make sure that this is pretty snug. Now, you don't necessarily need a tool or can use a tool, but usually what I'll do is I'll finger tighten it on like that and then I will tighten the ball head like this and then just give it an extra twist so it's nice and snug. There's usually also a screw to hold the quick release plate attachment onto the tripod itself. See that? And that requires a special Allen wrench. So make sure you have the Allen wrench and tool that you need so that you can tighten it down. This will eventually become loose. And this isn't the kind of thing you're ever going to take off. So if it does come loose, you might wanna just drop a little, drop a Loctite in there and then really tighten it down hard. Definitely been on trips where I traveled around the world and then found out that this particular plate was loose and I didn't bring my tool and then my tripod is just kind of useless. Depending on your tripod, you might have screws at the tops of the legs and on the clamps itself. You can see this particular one is tightened with a regular screwdriver, but most of them will require some special Allen wrench. If you have these sort of flip locks, ideally when it's open, it will slide evenly and when it's closed, it will not push closed at all. But over time, it can become loose and when you push on it, it will simply close even when this is latched in place. You want to just regularly tighten it down so the screw is in that sweet spot of being able to slide freely when it's open, but not sliding at all, even under pressure when it's tightened down. This is something I've had to do once every five years with tripods that receive regular use, so it's not something you need to do on a regular basis, but check it before any important trip. Let's talk about lenses. Lenses are usually made of glass and thus they require some types of maintenance. First of all, the biggest problem that you're going to have is just dust will get in there. And for that, I just like to inspect the front element and the rear element. And if I don't see any dust, then I don't do anything. It's possible to over maintain your lenses. You don't wanna be wiping it unnecessarily. But if you can see some dust in there, I use this kind of multi-step process. The first is I just use a blower and I kind of blow the dust out. And then I will use a brush and I try to brush from the center 
of the lens outward and then and only then if I have not sufficiently removed the dust will I resort to a lens cloth. Honestly your t-shirt can be okay in a pinch too. I've never seen it actually scratch it but the lens cloth is of course ideal. These microfiber cloths do a good job of grabbing dust but you should not consider them infinitely reusable. Once they collect dust and particles they become like sandpaper. Those particles themselves stay in the cloth and can then go on to scratch your lens. So that's why you don't want to just blindly grab any sort of cloth and start rubbing it because if it is dirty then you can be rubbing that grime in and actually making things worse. You should also open up the aperture on the lens. You might have to do that while it's attached to the camera and then look through it and see if you can see any major particles or mold inside the lens. We have some vintage lenses where this is more obvious. The bad news is, is that in most cases, this probably isn't fixable. Removing that sort of dust would require disassembling the lens and it's gonna happen. Like even weather sealed lenses will eventually get dust in them. Fortunately, most of the time you will not notice that dust, so it doesn't necessarily be a problem. It's just something to be aware of. If you see mold growing, that can definitely reduce the sharpness of your lens, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily ruin it. It's just something you need to check. I'll say some people use UV filters on the front of their lens to protect it. I personally do not do that. I used to use filters and a couple of times I dropped my lens where I banged it against something and the filter actually made things worse because the filter would bend and get like welded onto the front of the lens to the point where I wouldn't be able to remove it. And then the process of trying to remove the filter itself would end up damaging the lens even more. Usually I feel like I'm better off using a lens hood. This is sort of preventative maintenance. I always keep a lens hood on there because when I'm walking, it will bang against things rather than the front of the lens banging against things. I do not use a front cap on my lens when I'm walking around ready to shoot because I don't want to have to take it off and miss that moment. However, every time I put a lens in a bag, I put on both front and rear lens caps because things can get scratched in your bag, even if it's a bag designed for photography equipment, because sometimes you'll have a loose key or something else in the bag that will fall into the same compartment and end up scratching those elements. So be sure you keep those lens caps in your bag. One last thing that needs maintenance is your skill set. Photography styles constantly change. Trends come and go. And maybe you're always going to shoot the same way. Maybe you've got a powerful style. But if that's true, you're eventually going to get left behind. Subscribe to this channel and we'll try to keep you up to date on the latest photography trends so that you can be cool. <laughs> we also can suggest a couple of books. We have a whole series of books. Stunning Digital Photography is the number one photography book in the world. And it includes over 14 hours of video training, in case you don't like reading. We also have books on Lightroom and Photoshop, because guess what? Nowadays, post-processing is really, really important. There are also video books, so check them out. If you have other gear maintenance suggestions, if you don't agree with how I'm maintaining my gear, write a comment down below. I'd love to hear it. Thanks and bye.